Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And once again, this is the one day chart. We're sitting here just under 53 cents. We fell back into that channel. And I think it's because there's a lot of things going on in the Middle East right now. Plus, there's a lot of talk about recession as well. And I think the market is going to open red tomorrow, the stock market. And I think a lot of people know that's coming. One XRP equals $10,000. All the money. All these funds will soon want XRP. BlackRock, Vanguard. Vanguard has been involved with Ripple for a long period of time. Same thing with Fidelity, UBS. And then you see Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs. But when these funds are buying up XRP, they're going to be locking it away, using it for its actual utility and use case. They're not going to be buying it up because of an ETF. You got to remember there's a big difference between XRP and Bitcoin. XRP has real world use case. And I put out a poll earlier today. There have been a lot of people sending me messages asking me questions about being forced to sell their XRP in the future due to scarcity because it will be used by central banks and the IMF, BIS, etc. How many of you are worried that this will happen? I am curious because I have so many opinions to counter this, but it's way too much to type. I want to know what your thoughts are. Put it in the comment section down below. Here's my thinking. This goes back even before 2020. People always said they're going to either confiscate your XRP, which I don't think is going to happen, or they're going to force you to sell it. But how could they force you to sell it? Well, think about it. What was Gary Gensler going after? Binance and Coinbase, the exchanges, and even Chewy's said here, it is a high possibility that they will be delisted from all exchanges and the holders will be forced to the value they want as there is no place where they can sell them. Think about it. So if they cut off the off ramps, you're stuck with your XRP because you wouldn't be able to sell it. But this goes against everything that I've ever thought about XRP. Because I always thought in the future, we're going to be able to get passive income from our XRP. We'll be able to lend it out to these big financial institutions and get passive income from it. But this is being talked about a lot here and there. Because we realize what XRP is built to do. It's built to move the money of 8 plus billion people all around the world. And other people said they might force you to sell your XRP and then buy XLM because it's the people's money. But that goes back to the thinking that XRP is only going to be used by the banks. But look what Ripple's doing now. They're also shifting towards banking the unbanked. And I think what's going to happen is XRP is going to hit a very high price. And sure, they're not going to like the idea that a lot of people are holding XRP. But you also got to remember, a lot of people are going to be selling along the way. A lot of people are going to be out at 5 or $10. Other people are going to be out at $50 and so on. So I don't really think there's going to be a need for them to force you to sell your XRP. I also think that whoever holds until XRP reaches its full potential, those people will be the new 1%. The passive income you would be getting off of XRP if it was at four and five digits would be incredible. It would be absolutely crazy. People would be pulling easy six figures a year just from passive income. And that's if you didn't even hold, say, 10,000 XRP. That's how big this could actually get. It, I think we will see scarcity, though, because think about it. 
if these big financial institutions and all the banks, the central banks are locking away XRP in these liquidity pools, and you're waiting for someone to sell their XRP so you could buy XRP off the exchanges, that will also be a very crazy time. But I think we will get there. But the one thing people always argue is this. First, you have market cap, which I debunked in yesterday's video. And I said, people now say based on circulating supply, but that isn't correct either. Since most of the supply will be locked away in massive liquidity pools for long periods of time, leading to massive demand. What it is, is every time somebody says XRP can possibly get to high prices, somebody has to counter it with something else. And that's been going on forever. First, they will say market cap, and when you debunk that, they will then turn to the supply that XRP has. And if you look at this, you could see the same thing happening with XLM, because there's even less XLM. So I think there's going to be scarcity on that cryptocurrency as well. And a lot of people will also get passive income from XLM. I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because I keep seeing people say, wait until you can't sell your XRP. Wait until they force you to sell it at cheap prices only so you could sit back and watch it go higher and higher. But I really don't think that will be happening. Then there's this, and this is circulating all around X right now. This comes from Matt in Divi. Take a listen. Alexa? What's a worldwide bridge currency? Here is an answer from an Alexa Answers contributor that I translated. The digital currency Ripple, which is also known as XRP, is a bridge currency for transactions between different currencies, countries and financial institutions. Ripple gives its users the opportunity to transfer money very quickly and cheaply. Take notice, she even says what I say all the time. The reason the banks are going to use it is because it will give them the upper hand on the competition. They will be able to offer their customers a way to send money fast, cheap, and secure. That's what XRP is built to do. Let the truth be told, Ryan. They knew long ago proof of work doesn't work. Why XRP was created to cover everything Bitcoin couldn't. This comes from Riz. Remember, Ethereum changed over from proof of work to proof of stake consensus mechanism. They knew all along that Bitcoin just doesn't work. Take a listen. Proof of work doesn't work. Uh, proof of work doesn't work. Oh, it's Ryan, been widely... Ryan, proof of oh, work doesn't work. Let me finish. Let proof finish. of work doesn't let work. Finish, please. And in the early days of Bitcoin, there was a whole group of developers that broke off to create other assets, XRP being one of them, that doesn't use mining, that's cheaper from an energy perspective than Visa, and already scales to 1,500 transactions a second. A lot of these problems have already been solved. The challenge for adoption comes back to policy. The, the policy uncertainty around some of the assets has limited adoption, particularly here in the US. And I'm speaking from Ripple and XRP because we use that, that asset because it's a half a cent per payment. It's basically free. It's uh, it scales and it's efficient to 1,500 transactions a second at, no inter at nearly no energy burn. So we're at a point today where there are real solutions to all of these challenges that already exist. Policy has become the challenge. And we heard on the first panel that around uh, centralization on China, and this is going to be a hard pill for Peter to swallow, but 80% of the mining power for Bitcoin is controlled by six mining pools, five of which are in China. Today, the policy certainty in the U.S. exists for Bitcoin and Ethereum, despite the fact those are China-controlled platforms. So activity goes to those platforms. Now, wait until the U.S. company gets clarity, gets the regulations. We already got clarity for XRP. Wait until regulations paved a way for XRP in the United States. The adoption is going to happen very quick. And they knew this back then. I think that's why the SEC took Ripple to court in the first place. So it would lead to regulations and a clear path forward for XRP. 
because I think XRP was always meant to fix a lot of the problems that we have in this country with the U.S. dollar. It strengthens the dollar. Think about it. All of a sudden, we go from shipping dollars in airplanes overseas to sending those same dollars in a matter of seconds using XRP. And that's all we're waiting on right now for adoption is clear regulations. And those are definitely coming as well. As Russia keeps making the world fast track, the U.S. will have regulations quicker than we think. But it brings me to this point right here. This is another reason why I don't buy Bitcoin. Franklin Templeton has a Bitcoin ETF and they are saying this. Why buy the distraction when you can hold the disruption? The disruption will end the, trend, the distraction. And it's going to be XRP and XLM. That's the disruption that's coming. But listen to what she says right here. Bitcoin is the greatest distraction from the greatest disruption that is coming to financial services. They know, they already know, even before they ever came out with these Bitcoin ETFs, they knew Bitcoin was nothing but a distraction. It's still a distraction right now. And that's why I always urge new investors to start to look at utility. Because most people that come into the crypto space, they got here because of the mainstream media news, especially right now. You know, I had friends that I've been telling about crypto for years, for the past three, four, five, six years now. Get into crypto. It's the future. And they just ignore you. But now that Trump likes crypto, all of a sudden, they're like, I'm going to buy crypto. I got to get crypto. You know, Trump had told us it's now going to be backed by, you know, the U.S. dollar is going to be backed by it. I have to have it. These are the same things I've been telling these people for years, except I've been telling them a fourth industrial revolution is coming. I tell them a new financial system is coming. You got to invest in the right cryptocurrencies once you get into crypto. Bitcoin will be the distraction until the disruption begins. Once that happens, they no longer need that distraction. And that's how we will see Bitcoin become irrelevant. All of a sudden, the value will leave Bitcoin and it will flow into these utility-driven cryptocurrencies. That's going to happen. And when it happens, it's going to shock the entire crypto space. A lot of people are going to lose a lot of money just because they think that Bitcoin is always going to be going higher and higher in price. Everything happens until it doesn't. And that's what I always tell people. You know, I look at Bitcoin as it was great because it started all of this. But the same developers of Bitcoin they had to go in a different direction because they already knew there was problems with it. It's not going to be part of the new financial system. It's not going to be part of the future. Technology is advancing and it's happening very quick and it's slowly leaving Bitcoin behind. But I really don't think they're going to be forcing you to sell your XRP in the future. But I did want to cover that in today's video. Because I see more and more talk of that now. I thought that was something we talked about five years ago. And it kind of just drifted away. Because that was also part of the buyback scenario. You know, they would force you to sell it to the U.S. government. But that doesn't make sense. Because what happens with people that are holding XRP in the U.K. and Australia and other places around the world? And I think anybody that's still here when all the dust settles and we get to see the true price of XRP, those people will become the new 1%. And I plan on being one of those people. And I plan on helping you get there by keeping you positive every single day. Because I really want to cross that finish line with all of you. And I know the finish line is now in sight. But until it all happens, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.